Hey guys, it's Danielle with Danielle Gets It Done, and these are my September favorites. Gonna love you, honey, on and on and on. I'm a morning dove singing out a song. We'll start with books. I read one book in September. Actually, it took me two months. I started it in August. It is called Still Lives. I actually kind of found it through some of you who told me to look up Reese Witherspoon's book club on Instagram. I will link that below. Speaking of Instagram, I'd love to have you connect with me. My handle is at Danielle Gets It Done. So a lot of you were saying that she picks really good books and this was her August pick and I really enjoyed it. It's a simple read. It's a murder mystery that takes place in a Los Angeles art museum scene and it was just an easy enjoyable mystery i would say i both got the hard copy from my library and i got it on audible i like doing that sometimes with the same book so i would read a couple chapters before bedtime and then the next morning get in my car for my commute and pick up where i left off on audible and i have to say the audible narrator on this book was so good. I looked her up because I assumed it was the author, but it wasn't. She must be a professional book narrator. She had different accents for the different characters, different way of speaking, but it wasn't cheesy or annoying at all. She was awesome. I prefer reading books over listening to them, but for this book, I would probably choose to listen to it on Audible. She was just that good. I have a code actually for Audible that I will link below. It's either one free book or two free books if you're new. They kind of change what they're giving out. So I definitely recommend this book on Audible. Moving on to TV, I never mention Real Housewives on Bravo <laughs> on my favorites because I feel like that's just a given. Like, of course I drink water, I don't need to tell you, <laughs> which is kind of messed up. but. Yes, I am a Real Housewife fan. I love them all. Though I never got into Potomac. Let me know if I should revisit that. But anyways, New York wrapped up in September. I didn't like this season. The Bethany and Carol fight was painful to watch. And it was just too much. I see both sides. I think they're both being ridiculous and it was just really sad. So that was definitely not my favorite season of the New York Housewives, but definitely watched that. The OC started recently. I love the OC. It's the OG, the OC. I started watching it right when it came out from my junior dorm room paying episode by episode on iTunes, and I just like it. Vicky, for the most part, is back in good graces. There are two new castmates. It's pretty good so far. And then Dallas started recently up again. It is all the same people from last year, which is always nice, and I like Dallas. And then I also watched Shaws of Sunset, which is another reality show on Bravo. Not, it's not The Real Housewives, but it's pretty similar. It chronicles a group of LA people who are in their 30s and 40s. They are Persian and rich and half are Jewish and half are Muslim. So there's just like a lot of cultural things that are different for me and they're just really funny. So there is my serious TV. <laughs> Moving on to more serious TV is another thing I don't really talk about on my channel too often is I'm really into politics. I study politics in college. I like to keep up with the news. So I have a political show and a podcast to tell you about. The show is a documentary on Netflix called Get Me Roger Stone. And Roger Stone has been a huge political fixture in the conservative movement for years and years. He got his start during the Nixon presidency. He's obsessed with Nixon. It's really weird. He has a huge tattoo of Nixon's face on his back. He is weird. Like, Roger Stone is super weird and odd. He reminds me of... Andy Warhol in some weird way and he's just really interesting and I like learning about interesting people. He's very controversial, kind of known as a little slimy, kind of bending the rules but not quite breaking them to get his way or his platform 
ahead and so it's it's interesting it's especially interesting in today's political climate for a few reasons um, number one he's been begging Donald Trump to run for president for decades he's thought to be the architect of the rise of Trump's political career he was on Donald Trump's payroll um, when he was running for president at times he is not on the payroll now but is still thought to be a close advisor to the president so Donald Trump is actually interviewed in this documentary talking about Roger Stone so that's interesting number two is Paul Manafort who is in jail right now awaiting his prison sentence for multiple felonies that he's both pled guilty to and been found guilty by a jury as part of Robert Mueller's investigation. Paul Manafort was Trump's campaign chairperson during the inauguration and back in the day Paul Manafort, Roger Stone, and this other guy started a political firm that was really controversial. So they've been partners and tied together for years and uh, Roger Stone is thought to have gotten Paul Manafort that position with Trump and Paul Manafort is interviewed a bunch in this documentary talking about his old pal Roger Stone and it's just weird because it's obviously before all of his drama took place so it's Paul Manafort in his expensive suits talking to the camera and it's just weird to watch because you know he's in an orange jumpsuit now it's very wild and then the last reason I think this is interesting to watch right now is because a lot of people suspect Roger Stone has been talked to by Mueller, maybe indicted by Mueller. He may be charged with crimes or called to testify. We think that we. <laughs> it is thought that there is more to Roger Stone's involvement with all of the crazy stuff that's going on. Really love that documentary. And then secondly, I've been watching, no, listening to a podcast called Slow Burn. My friend Nicole told me about this. It is two seasons. Season one was all about the Nixon Watergate scandal. And I found it fascinating because I really only knew the bare minimum, I would say, of what happened. So I learned just a ton more. It's a bunch of interviews from people who were there and lived it. There are a lot of similarities between Nixon and Trump. Their politics, their style, their leadership style, and there are also a lot of similarities between Watergate and the Trump investigation, Robert Mueller's investigation. If you love Donald Trump, you might be a little annoyed with this podcast. It's not about Donald Trump, it's about Nixon, but there are definitely parallels that are blatantly pointed out by the producer. I found it fascinating. And then season two, which is going on right now, I think they're halfway done, is about the Clinton impeachment, Bill Clinton. and. Unlike the Nixon thing, I thought I knew a lot about that. I lived it. I was young, but I was old enough to understand what was happening with the Monica Lewinsky um, scandal and his impeachment. And But I'm just learning a lot more that I never knew. And in the Me Too movement, I think it's really interesting to kind of revisit what happened. When it was going on and I was a little sheltered girl, I thought, what a bad person. He doesn't deserve to be president. And then I kind of matured and grew up and my stance has been, you know, having an affair is not good. He was a bad husband, but good people unfortunately have affairs and it doesn't mean that he's a bad president. And I thought, it doesn't mean he shouldn't be president or he's a bad president that we can kind of separate his public and private life. So that's been my stance. But now during the Me Too movement and kind of learning more and evolving and learning more through this podcast, I've kind of come full circle. And I think my stance now is that he probably should have been kicked out of office. And that's not really what the podcast is about. That's just kind of my um, 
I'm just kind of telling you my opinion through listening to it. The podcast definitely isn't really trying to persuade you. But I mean, Monica Lewinsky was so young. It's crazy. And he's the president. And just that power discrepancy, I think he totally took advantage of that for sexual gratification. And while it was mutual, I just think just so inappropriate because of what I had just said. And on top of that, he's accused of things far, far worse than um, mutual affairs. A lot of harassment and attacks and I just think, I don't know, it'd be, I mean, I hope that doesn't happen today so we don't find out what happens, but I think if it did happen today, he would probably not survive. I don't know. I just think it's, I don't know. I like stuff like that. I like the news and politics. So I hope that's okay to share with you a little bit on my favorites. Let's move on to some lighter fall things. I definitely consume more tea in the fall and I am loving red raspberry leaf tea. This is an herbal tea. So zero caffeine, but it tastes like a black tea. The raspberry is a little misleading, but it's just the leaf of a raspberry, so it's not fruity at all. It tastes like a black tea, but again, no caffeine. So if you really love black tea, but are avoiding caffeine or want some tea at night, you might really like this. It's known as a uterine tonic. It's really good for women's health. It's supposed to tone your uterus, which is like working out while you're enjoying a cup of tea, which is awesome. I am pregnant, so that's mainly why I am drinking it. It's thought to help shorten labor and make it more efficient. A lot of women drink it for uh, period relief. It helps with their menstrual cycles. So there's a lot of great benefits to this tea. If you are pregnant, definitely check with your midwife or doctor first because there are differing opinions on when you should start it during pregnancy. Some women drink throughout, some, which was my choice, start in the second trimester, um, some the third trimester, or only the very end. There are really strong opinions about when that's best, but I've been enjoying a cup a day through my second trimester and I really like it. I am not a pumpkin spice latte girl. I want to be, I can't, I don't like it. <laughs> and that's okay. I think I don't like any spicy kind of hot drink. I don't like apple cider either. So I've just accepted it, but I do want to get in on the pumpkin fun. And so what I do is I add some pumpkin puree to my morning green smoothies, just the can of pure pumpkin puree. So there's no sugar added. And I just scoop it in with my spinach and banana and protein powder. And it tastes like all the fall feels. It's delicious and healthy and it's just amazing. I will link above in the cards a video that I filmed last fall showing exactly what I do. You have to try it. This is my first fall as an essential oil connoisseur. Um, and so I've been having a lot of fun playing around with different blends to diffuse to get that fall scent in the air. I'm not burning any candles anymore other than beeswax, which is not scented. So. I'm playing around with different concoctions to make my house smell beautiful and seasonal. So I'll just share one with you right now, but if you like this, let me know. I could do a video dedicated to this. This is a blend with three oils and all of these come in the Young Living Starter Kit. So that's kind of why I chose these. So what I do is three drops of Thieves, which has a bunch of ingredients in it, but what, why I like it for fall is the cinnamon ingredient. It just smells fall slash Christmassy to me. And then I had to think, uh, two drops of frankincense. Frankincense is my BFF and uh, I don't know. I think it smells fallish, so I think it's perfect for a fall blend, though I love this at all times. <laughs> And then I do one drop of Citrus Fresh. Citrus Fresh is a blend of a bunch of citrus essential oils, which is really good in the fall and winter. And then there also is some vanilla flavoring in there. And I feel like that vanilla really makes it seasonal. You kind of think of baking when you smell vanilla. So again, three drops of Thieves, two of Frankincense, one of Citrus Fresh. 
You might want to do one of frankincense, two of citrus fresh, whatever your preference. I just like a hint of citrus in my fall blend and it again makes my whole house smell like a cozy fall day. I think that is everything. I hope you enjoyed what I had. I'm so excited because October is my favorite month so I'm just ready to enjoy every single day of October and all the things that it brings. Pumpkin patches, picking apples, hay rides. Such a fun time of year. So I will see you for my October favorites next month. If you haven't subscribed, I'd love to have you click the button so you don't miss anything. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. I hope you all have a wonderful day and whatever your plans are, I hope you get them done. Bye guys. Ooh.